Ooh, very nice, yeah, Glenn. Yes. You like it? Oh, yeah, very much. I what is it? Is, it? is this your firewall? Yes, of course. I, wow! Just in case an actual fire breaks out, I brought my fire thing. Or, or mysterious fireballs come yes. from nowhere. Well, of course, yes. We know we gotta show this to Mike. Hey, uh, Baldy! Baldy, come here and look at Glenn's firewall. Wow. He's right here. He's right here. Hey, nice. It's huh? beautiful. Yes, I like it. What is it? Firewall! Why did you put this on my desk? Is it to protect you from mysterious fireballs? Let me guess. I'm supposed to do this, right? Well, of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. If I Perfect. only had a heart. What? Ba -dip, ba -dip, ba -dip. Sorry, I waxed musical there for a moment. Guys, this is a beautiful, beautiful firewall. Yes, but thank you, thank you, thank you. It's not exactly what I was looking for. What? Um, you said wall. And we fire. built it. Yeah, and you did. And it's a beautiful, beautiful wall. But when we talk about firewalls in the networking world, what we're talking about are either pieces of software or hardware that act as barriers against evil things that come from the outside well, trying to get into our network. Evil hardware? It's a pretty serious uh, hardware. But usually what we're talking about is some boxes with some RJ45 connectors in here. So while it's a good job, I think we're going to have to, why don't we instead, let me show you how some real firewalls look. So I think the best thing what? to do at this point is let's go ahead and take a look at some firewalls, starting with the built-in Windows firewall and then moving to some hardware solutions. But this one is real. You wasted your time, Glebe. But it looks good. Oh, oh well, it looks good, oh, though, he says. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to have to fire up some Windows. Thanks for trying, though. I appreciate it. Whatever. Bye. <laughs> so to access the Windows firewall, the best way is to go into your control panel. And here's Windows firewall right here. So right now you see the Windows firewall is on. So what we could do is th this is your base setting. Basically, it's on or off, and you really want to keep it on for all intents and purposes. Now, block all incoming connections. Basically, that doesn't mean you can't go out to a website and then the incoming web page. We're talking anybody who initiates a conversation is an incoming connection. So the other thing is, is that you're going to have exceptions. There are lots of things that you don't want to block. So when you first fire up Windows Firewall, it pretty much blocks almost everything except for some core Windows things like file and folder sharing. So then you have to go in and over time, you begin to create more and more exceptions. Now, you don't actually have to create these exceptions. If for, let's take a look at one. So like here's Abyss Web Server. If we look at the properties on this, all it says is Abyss Web Server. The important thing to appreciate is that Windows has a couple of things to look at here. Basically, a software firewall has two main things it can look at. It can look at the port number, and it can look at the actual program or application itself. So Windows will say, anytime I see this program, when it fires up, if it tries to access the internet in any way, I can stop it. So you can actually firewall stuff based on just the name of the program. The other way is by port numbers. Now, ports are both incoming and outgoing. Let's talk about port 80 for a minute. Most people want outgoing port 80 to run just fine. That means you're on a, you've got Internet Explorer or Firefox running and you want to access a web page. In that case, that's an outgoing port 80 and usually you don't want to block those. But incoming port 80 is a different game. Why, unless you're running a web server, would anybody ever want to have incoming port 80? So that's a trick that bad guys do and bad programs do to try to get into your system. What they're looking for are known as open ports. And this would be an example of a port that you wouldn't want open. Windows Firewall will block port 80, but in my case, I actually have a web server running. So I've got a couple of choices. I can tell Windows, look, when the Abyss web server is running, let stuff into it. Or I can also say, when the Abyss web server is running, just let port 80 into it. So you've got some pretty strong controls here. Now, as we go back and take a look at this, we'll notice that there is a whole bunch of exceptions in here. So I like to play World of Warcraft, so there's some Blizzard stuff in here. File and printer sharing, those are on ports 139 and 443, so they need to be opened up. And then here's Skype. All of these programs, by default, pretty much are based on the application itself. Whenever that program's running, that's pretty much all we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out of here. Oh, before I cancel, let's take a look at Advance. You can actually say what network adapters do you have something turned on to? For example, I might have one connection that's connected to the internet, but then I have all these virtual machines. In this case, there's a good chance I may want to turn those off because they're not going out to the internet. These are just little connections that I have on my computer, extra network cards that are, don't need to be protected. 
So just hit apply for now and hit OK. All right. So he's not happy with the fact that I've made a couple of little changes, but we're not going to sweat that for right now. So let me close this. And if you really want to get crazy with the firewall, you go into administrative tools and you go down to Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. So the two big places we want to play with are right here, inbound rules and outbound rules. Inbound rules are the ones that worry us the most, so that's the one I'm going to concentrate on. So for example, let's take a look at this Abyss web server. What are the inbound rules for him to be able to do? So let me go ahead and go to his properties, and we'll see this is the Abyss web server, so it's currently enabled. We allow connections, and, but we can also specify on what ports. So locally, we allow incoming port 80 for this particular web server because that's what he needs. Incoming port 80 is the stuff we want him to accept. You can also come in here, for example, Skype by itself. Again, in this case, it's just based on the program itself. So it literally says exactly when this program is running, I can even go over all the way. When Skype.exe is running, this is what we're going to allow. In this case, when Skype's running, we allow any port, any port for incoming he can take, which is good because some programs like Skype don't necessarily use just one port number. Skype can go crazy and use a whole bunch of different port numbers, so this is why this particular software firewall is really nice. Now the only downside to a software firewall is that you kind of got to train it. So as you keep adding programs, it keeps blocking stuff. On a new installation of Windows, this thing will start blocking like crazy. And that's, that's what it does by design. You have to have enough knowledge to be able to go, yes, that's a good program. Yes, that's a good program. And there are actually websites that will help you figure out what programs are good and which aren't. Most of the time, though, you're doing something. For example, I just installed a Telnet and SSH server. Now, as you can might imagine, he's going to have to be accepting a lot of incoming port stuff. So in this particular case, the moment I fire him up and start him up, boom, look what just showed up on my screen. So what we're looking at is Windows yelling at me. It's like, hey, 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 there's this program, and he's trying to do stuff. So in this case, we know what he's doing. So we can go ahead and unblock it. Yeah, yeah, continue. I love UAC. And, I, and actually, now the Telnet server will work. And that way, I can run a firewall. And then that way, people are safe from just about anything else. But except if they're running Telnet, it'll come to the SSH. So technically, Right now, I'm a little bit exposed, not too badly exposed, but a little bit because anybody can at least get to my computer if they come in on a Telnet port number. The important thing to remember about software firewalls is that, in my opinion, they're only half of your defense. Any network, from the smallest to the largest, needs some kind of hardware firewall. These inexpensive home routers are really great because routers, by definition, have to look at IP addresses, so this is a natural place to add some firewall software, and as a result of that, we call this a hardware firewall because it's kind of like a box, but really the programming in here isn't too terribly different from the programming that we have built into Windows. The thing is, is that this guy protects you from the outside world because you know what you want to stop from having come in. The software that comes on Windows, in my opinion, protects you from yourself. Let's say you accidentally click on some Trojan and it's, now it's going to start trying to spread out. The Windows software firewall will sit there and go, oh, hey, when these things keep popping up, hey, this guy's trying to do this, this guy's trying to do that. So to me, I need both firewalls, a hardware firewall and a software firewall. 